Avirodhitaya karma na vidyang vinivartayet vidya vidyang nihantyeva tejas timira sanghavat Avirodhitaya for not being opposed karma action na not avidyang ignorance vinivartayet destroys vidya knowledge avidyang ignorance nihanta destroys eva certainly tejaha light timirasangavat as deep darkness action cannot destroy ignorance for it is not in conflict with ignorance knowledge alone destroys ignorance as light destroys dense darkness namaste so the only reason we cannot realize brahman immediately is ignorance brahman is there brahman is the self our self but brahman is covered over by ignorance this is called upadi meaning a limiting adjunct it's also called superimposition where the substrate of consciousness is brahman turiya but this is covered over by layers of conditioned consciousness conditioned consciousness comes in three flavors jagrat svapna and sushupti Anyone who's been following this channel for a while understands these terms. Waking, dreaming, and deep sleep consciousness. Really, the consciousness is the same, but it's conditioned by its objects. So depending on where we direct our consciousness or uh, where we focus, then the world looks a certain way. Either it looks like a world full of objects or it looks like a dream or it looks like emptiness nothingness the void this is just the different objects of consciousness either sense objects mental objects or no objects at all okay if action cannot remove these upadis huh? because action is done with the body and mind one thinks one knows one speaks, one acts with the body in different ways. Even religious actions, such as Vedic sacrifices, cannot directly lead to enlightenment. They can indirectly prepare one by purifying the mind and the body and generating a store of good karma. This is helpful. And it's actually required as a prerequisite. But it cannot directly lead to enlightenment. What directly leads to enlightenment is knowledge. Jnana. Not ordinary knowledge. Knowledge of Brahman. Which is given in the Vedic scriptures. Especially the Upanishads. But the Upanishads are not appropriate for public discussion. Therefore, we're going into this Atma Bodha which is a derivative work, original work by Shankaracharya. It embodies the Vedic wisdom, the Upanishadic truths, without directly invoking the Upanishads, which is not appropriate in a public venue. So this is very well suited for the audience we have today, who have very little background in terms of Sanskrit, logic, Vedic culture, and so on. So then the question would arise, how exactly does knowledge lead directly to self-realization or knowledge of Brahman, jnana? Well, the answer is given by Shankaracharya in his commentary on Vedanta Sutra 112. There he talks about sadhana and the three types of sadhana 
are hearing of the texts, shravana, thinking about their meaning, manana, and meditation on them, nididhyasana. This leads to intuition. By intuition is meant that mental modification, vritti, of the mind, chitta, which destroys our ignorance about Brahman. When the ignorance is destroyed by this mental modification in the form of Brahman, Brahmakara Vritti, Brahman, which is self-luminous, reveals itself. In ordinary perception, when we cognize an object, the mind, chitta, takes the form of the external object, which destroys the ignorance about it, and consciousness reflected in this modification of the mind manifests the object. In the case of Brahman, however, the mental modification destroys the ignorance, but Brahman, which is consciousness pure and simple, manifests itself, being self-luminous. So this is the difference between an ordinary perception and realization of Brahman. In ordinary perception, there is an object, a sense object, or a mental object. And then when the chitta, the mind, takes the form of that object, just like a mirror reflects the form of anything put in front of it. This is called chitta vritti, or modification of the mind. Just like when you put a red thing in front of a mirror, it reflects red. The mirror by itself has no color, but whenever you put something of a certain color or form in front of it, it seems to adopt that color and form and reflect it as if that was its own quality, but it's just a reflection. Similarly, the mind takes the form or properties of whatever is put before it by our attention, and then when consciousness is reflected in the mind, it assumes that form and quality. But this is not so in the case of Brahman. There is a specific vritti, a specific modification of the mind that reveals Brahman by removing the ignorance that blocks it. And when that happens, the mind doesn't have to reflect Brahman. The mind can't reflect Brahman. <laughs> Brahman is the self. So what happens? We get what's called intuition. Brahma karavritti means Brahman destroys the modifications. Here's where a little knowledge of Sanskrit comes in very handy. Brahma karavritti happens when the ignorance about Brahman is removed by hearing, contemplating, and meditating on knowledge of Brahman. And that's the purpose of this work. That's the purpose of this series, to give you that knowledge which once heard, reflected upon, and meditated on for a prolonged period of time forms the Brahmakara Vritti that gets rid of the ignorance, that blocks our knowledge or realization of Brahman. See, when the scriptures say knowledge, jnana, it doesn't mean like verbal knowledge, like scriptures, or even symbolic knowledge, like diagrams or charts. It means direct knowledge or direct consciousness of something. Now, you cannot be conscious of Brahman because Brahman is consciousness, <laughs> just like the mirror cannot reflect itself. It can only reflect an external object, and the same is true of consciousness. Consciousness is duality between the seer and the seen, the drik and the drishya. So we went over this in Drik Drishya Vivekaha, but it's always good to review it again that the sense objects are the seen, and the senses are the seer. The senses are the seen, and the mind is the seer. The mind is the seen, and consciousness is the seer. 
consciousness is the seeing, and Brahman or Turiya is the seer. So this is how we know, this is how we cognize Brahman, not as the seen, but as the seer. And as is stated in Brihad Aranyakopanishad, how can we know that by which everything is known? How can the knower be known? Well, it can't. It can only be experienced. This is intuition. And so Shankaracharya gives the explanation, the technical explanation, how this is possible when the ignorance is removed. So how is it removed? First of all, by hearing. Hearing these shlokas, hearing the explanations, hearing the quotes that we use to back up and support those explanations, and then thinking about it, going over it in your mind, reviewing it, contemplating it, thinking how could this be so, and searching for it in your own experience. Very important. Finally, meditating on this produces a vritti, a modification of the mind that removes the ignorance, brahmakara vritti. Uh, the, the modifications are actually removed by this modification. Huh? <laughs> it's like the example is given, if you get a thorn in your finger, uh, it's stuck inside the skin, you can use another thorn to dig in and take it out. So in the same way, this specific kind of vritti, brahmakara vritti, is used to remove the other vrittis that are <laughs> ignorance of Brahman. And in this way, Brahman is revealed, not found, not created, not discovered, because it's already there. Brahman is self shining, self-illuminating, self-effulgent. So as soon as the blocks are removed, it shines forth automatically. And this is the meditation on Brahman that is quoted in the invocation, that early in the morning I meditate on Brahman, which is the self, which is the unconditioned awareness of awareness, which is that which informs everything that exists by reflection of its infinite being, consciousness, and bliss. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.